Hi everyone. Welcome to Adventures with Raven and Rowley. I'm Raven and this is Rowley. Last week I talked about my efforts to rush the guards. It didn't work. This week I'll talk about taking a look around my home and trying to stop procrastination. For the past four and a half months, We've been living full-time in our 6x12 converted cargo trailer in the Nevada desert. For the previous five years, we've lived in an RV full-time, a Class A, and then a fifth wheel. If you're curious, please join us on this journey and continue to watch. I've been procrastinating for a very long time about a lot of different things. My book, for instance, I wrote the book about 40 years ago. It was a mind dump. It was just everything I knew went into this book, right? And I've published it here and there, self-publishing, you know, had on my website or whatever. Um, but I've been looking at publishing on um, Amazon Kindle, since 2019, or at least that's what it said when I logged in. Uh, I re-edited it a little bit though. As I said, I've been procrastinating. So this book, so this week, I published it as an e-book. Um, the paperback, paperback will come out probably next week. They have to do a check and all of that kind of good stuff. Uh, the link is in the description for my book. The name is Serpentine Grove. So that felt pretty good getting that accomplished finally after all of these years, right? And I realized, well, here I am. I've got to do other stuff. I need to, I need to keep this non-procrastination on, on a roll, you know? Uh, I had other stuff, like for instance, the chicken. <laughs> About two days ago, I defrosted chicken, thighs and drumsticks, and um, put them back in, you know, left them in the refrigerator. I figured this morning was a good day to, to cook them. So I stuck them out in the solar oven. That's going to be good. I finally let wash the dishes that I had let piled up. Uh, I had to I clean the house. I swept, but I haven't washed down this wood. I haven't polished the wood. I haven't done that yet. It was very satisfying to see the house clean. You would think, though, that a 6x12 cargo trailer um, would be real easy and really fast. Well, yes and no. <laughs> It depends upon how much you procrastinate, you know. <laughs> I had spoken with a real estate broker uh, who wanted me to send him a list of what I was looking for. I had never written down my wish and want list for the land, so it took a week. It actually took a week because I had to think about that. What do I really, 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 really want, you know. But I wrote down everything I wanted, you know. I finally remembered that I that I really never get what I want until I really define what I want. For instance, I kept saying, I, I want windows. I want windows in this trailer. I'm not going back out until I get windows and blah, blah, blah. But I had never really picked out any windows that I liked one way or the other. I mean, I saw a bunch of different windows. All of them could have worked. But I had never said, this is the window I want. About a week after I did that, I got the windows I wanted. Uh, someone graciously donated them to me. Terrific. But how were they going to donate if I never put it out there on the wish and want list, right? So anyway, so I remembered that I needed to, in order to get my land, I needed to find what I want. This stuff floating around in my head, you know, isn't really a definition. It's just a kind of wishy-washy wish. 
you know. So I made a land wish and want list. And it was fun. It was really fun to do that, you know. So, and also, this week was, this week was, you know, I was on a roll getting stuff done, you know. So I redid my budget. That was fun, too, since I'm not paying rent. It is a wonderful thing not to pay rent. <laughs> it is terrific. You can put all that money in the bank, you know, if you want to. It's really hard, though, not to spend that money. You know, I'm trying to save it, you know, but I could think of a lot of stuff to spend money on. I mean, it's just amazing how fast things come up that you could say, oh, yeah, I could do it. Oh, no, I can't do that. <laughs> you know, I want to save that money. So I've been using my Amazon wish and want list as a reminder of things that I want to buy sooner or later, you know. I've been reading a lot, a, a lot online and some real books. I all of a sudden acquired a bunch of different books. Let me see. This is, is that, that is not in the right direction. I might have to flip this over. This says, The Survival Medicine Handbook. I did not read this book. This is 700 and some odd pages. I did read the index, and I did read the, uh, the um, appendix. Uh, and I flipped through and looked at some stuff that came up that was interesting to me. But I think this is an excellent book to have. And then I got this one. This is Frugal Off-Guild Grid Living. Frugal Off-Grid. Build an off-grid homestead with next to nothing. This uh, Frugal Off-Grid is, is uh, a YouTube channel. And this guy sells his books. He started in the Arizona desert, high desert, with nothing except that he paid for his land outright and he had his car, his van he was living in and um, he had a flatbed that he put a water tank on and that was it. Oh, and a four dollar shovel. This is after two years of his living on there. This two years of homestead or homesteading off the grid alone. And then of course I was on a roll so I read all of those. This one is No Grid Survival product, Projects, How to Produce Everything You Need on Your Property. Well, yes and no. It's, some of it relies on, on the grid, on electricity. Some of it, you know, just, it's, some of it is really, really good, gives you really good ideas. And others, it's just not useful. And then, then, I had this one. This one is Poetical Mussings on Pianos, Music, and Life by a friend of mine, Ann Grogan. She wrote this herself. It's not published yet. I'm proofing it. But you know, you can't speed read a poem. You just gotta take it a little bit at a time, stop and think about it, you know, that kind of good stuff. But I'm more than three quarters of the way through that book. Okay. And then yesterday, or was it the day before, someone gave me this one. Uh, crystal healing for women, along with a bunch of crystals, which is very interesting. So, I'm acquiring a bookcase. <laughs> I mean, not that I didn't have a bunch of books already, you know. And then I said, oh my goodness, it's Thursday. Today is Thursday. This video has to be up line by 5 o'clock tomorrow. And I've been procrastinating. Big time. Because I don't know what to talk about. I don't think my life is interesting, overly interesting, or, oh, well, it might be interesting, but it's not really exciting. At least I don't think it is. Okay? <clears throat> so I don't know what to talk about most of the time. Okay? Things like dishes and budgets aren't things I think that people like to hear about. But living in the desert is like living anywhere else. I mean, in a 6x12 cargo trailer, although it's smaller, it's just like living in, a, in an RV or living in a house or, 
apartment, you know, you, you, make, you make it work wherever you are, you know. There are odds and ends things that are done differently, though, like dishes. The problem is I procrastinate. I hate washing dishes. It's just a thing with me. I just, it's always been there, <laughs> you know. I use water. Uh, but if it's just a quick clean, I'll use uh, vinegar and water in a spray bottle. And then I'll use the straight water for rinsing. And that's in a spray bottle too. But every now and then I take out my collapsible sink. And because I've really, really, really procrastinated for quite some time and washed the dishes, <laughs> you know, I'll use a gallon, a half gallon of water. But dirty dish water is hard to get rid of in the desert. Uh, it's hard to get rid of if you're if you're boondocking if you even if you're not boondocking in the desert if you're boondocking in the city for instance well it might be easy you could probably throw it down a, a sewer drain or something but anyway out in the desert it's it's difficult you have to make sure there's no food particles in that water and it has to be strained you know put the food particles in the garbage the water you disperse it out onto the bare ground you know you got to put it on the bare ground so that the sun gets to it, you know. Now, I use Dawn dish soap. I used to use Dr. Bronner's uh, Castile soap. But Dr. Bronner's soap doesn't foam up. And it doesn't really cut grease, you know. Um, and I never felt like it was doing anything at all to, to clean the dishes, you know. Um, and I was using just a drop of Dawn and I was using a lot of Dr. Bronner's so I'm figuring which is worse for the environment you know the drop of Dawn or the half a cup of Dr. Bronner's so I stay with the Dawn I use paper towels paper plates paper bowls because as I said I really hate washing dishes of course that means I gotta wash pots I use disposable spoons because <laughs> I'm really seriously lazy. I don't feel good about the spoons. Um, at least the paper plate, plates and bowls are biodegradable, you know, but the spoons, and I use them until they break, you know. When I'm washing dishes, when I'm washing the pots, for instance, and I've cooked something like bacon or whatever, if I, if I don't save the grease or, you know, the oil that I cooked in, I use baking soda to soak it up and then it becomes solid, you know, you could just scrape it off into the garbage. Now, you could do that too if you had a refrigerator, which I have, but it's not big enough to put a pot into, <laughs> you know, to make the, the grease solidify so that I could scrape it out into the garbage. So the baking soda really works well for that. And also it's a cleaning, it's a good cleaning product too. Garbage, uh, including people poo and dog poo, go into the dumpster in town once a week when I go get water, or take a shower, all that kind of good stuff. This is a very short video, but if you'd like to know how I do something in particular out here in the desert, please comment and let me know. The Rowley Report. Rowley doesn't really like people around me. He's very selfish in that way. Uh, there's another woman here on the plateau who he makes a point of barking at at least three or four times a day. He just goes out the door and barks at her car. She doesn't even have to be standing outside. He just goes out there and barks. <laughs> For a short while, there were two people who were volunteering at the Howard BYOV event, and they were staying here. The, B the Howards, that's Homes on Wheels Alliance, bring your own vehicle build. What they're doing is they're building out people's who can't afford otherwise to, they're building out their vans or their cars or whatever they're living in. Um, they're putting insulation, um, 
solar panels, whatever they need, you know. See the link below, please. Anyway, he went over and he barked at them too. People come to visit and he barks some of the time that they're here. I do have to say though that he is getting better. He only barked some of the time. He used to bark the whole time someone was here. He's very self selfish in his space and his people, you know. Otherwise though, he's a very good guard dog and I appreciate him for that. I really do. So thanks for watching and thanks for your support. I'll see you next Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care of you and yours and blessed be.